Joining me in studio right now, one of the candidates running for Congress for Texas at 19, Greg Garrett in studio. Greg, welcome to the show. Thank you, Chad. I appreciate it. I'm grateful to be here, and I appreciate you putting on this show. Absolutely. Uh, glad that you could make it today. Uh, tell folks a little bit about yourself. I was born here in West Texas. I've lived here all my life. I want to represent the West Texas area in the big country. I've been able to be blessed by purchasing a bank and running a federally regulated institution, as well as, you know, like a lot of people, have two jobs. I also own the Greg Garrett Real Living Realtors, uh, also located at the corner of Slide and Loop 289 in Lubbock, Texas. And uh, my wife's name is Nancy. She helps me manage the, the real estate company, and I have two wonderful children, Houston and Hope, that are now gone to college. All right. Uh, you have not been involved in, in politics before. You, you haven't run for office uh, before. Why run now? I have, I have never been a politician. I have been a businessman, and I think it's time we send somebody up to D.C. that will be bold and courageous, that will look at the issues, that will fix this country both morally and financially. We have got a lot of hard work in, in, in the process for us, and one of the things I want to do is I want to be the representative that goes up there. We can't all do it by ourselves, but I can make a dramatic change. Why do you think you can make the change in Washington, D.C.? Chad, the reason I feel like I can make the change is, number one, I have the ability to unify folks. Number two, I have the ability through business practices, you know, you know dealing with regulators, obviously, I, I have to understand what regulations are and compliance. And one of the things I can tell you about myself is, you know, seven and a half years ago, on June 25th of 07, I purchased the bank six months away from the greatest depression, you know, recession that we ever had, and we had zero capital. Today, we have $33 million in capital. I have a $4 million payroll to meet every year. I've grown my employee staff on an average 10% annually, and uh, I've been a profitable and sound bank. Matter of fact, I can actually tell this publicly, but part of, part of running an institution that's federally regulated is a compliance. And I will tell you that we've recently had all three exams, IT, compliance, and safety and soundness, and in my compliance exam, uh, we, were rated the, we were rated the highest in the nation at number one. So, Obviously, I have the business background to make things happen. You're running uh, for Congress, uh, hoping to replace Congressman Randy Nagabauer. What are some things that y you would do differently, uh, either your, you know, leadership-wise, style-wise? What would you do differently than Congressman Randy Nagabauer? You know, since I entered the race, I have a new appreciation for those that run. I will tell you that Randy Nagabauer has been a friend to the community bank business and to real estate agents. So I want to tell him, I appreciate you. One of the things I will do is I will be out among the people. I will be in every single one of the 29 districts on a regular basis. I will listen more than I will talk, and I will take that information to Washington, and I will, I will make sure that the people are heard. You, you brought up earlier that you wanted to unify, you, that, that you have unified people, and that you want to go to D.C. to unify. What does that mean uh, in, in your mind? You see right now, uh, there's a divide among Republicans. Obviously, there's a divide among Republicans and Democrats. Who are you wanting to unify? I will tell you that we, we as Republicans must come together and make strong, tough, common sense decisions that are going to bring this United States and District 19 back together. And, if, and it first starts morally. You know, I, I'm truly, I'm a believer. And I will tell you that if if we don't get this uh, country and this District 19 back to where uh, we're God-fearing, believing people, I'm not sure God's going to bless us to be able to have a country that we can prosper and grow, raise our families in, and be happy to leave leave it better than we left it before. What, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, I don't think that my children, they've already, they've already let me know, they may not have the same opportunities that I had. I mean, just look at how many banks have been chartered in the last two years. Two. Look at how many banks are, are existing. If you, if you actually look at banks, uh, we all look at banks and we think, oh, there's one on every corner, right? There used to be about 15,000 banks. There's about 6,400 banks today. There are approximately 300 banks that are being consolidated annually because of the regulation burden that we have. Now, let me say at the same voice, I have a great relationship with my regulators. My regulators are tough but fair, and I'm tough but fair. And I want you to know that I will be one person that will understand the regulations that need to be imposed and the regulations that need to be gone. We need fair regulation. Well, what are some of the regulations that need to be done away with? 
Well, the first thing, just not to talk about immigration, but let's let's the the regulations is obviously Dodd Frank. Look at Dodd Frank and what it's done to banks. And look what it's actually done to the senior citizens. I mean, if anybody has taken one for the team, it's the senior citizens. We got a, we got senior citizens who who fought in wars, who saved like they were supposed to, and now they're getting one percent on their money or less. I mean, they're the ones that have suffered the most, and we need to protect those senior citizens. We need to make sure there's ample. Uh, policies in place to make sure that if they do what they're supposed to do, that we're going to do our part also. Visiting with Greg Garrett, uh, running for Congress in Texas 19. Obviously, this is a large district. Texas 19 is a lot of ag uh, in this area. Uh, you're, you're talking a lot about your banking background, obviously. Uh, what about ag producers who are out there? They're listening, going, well, wait a minute. Uh, we felt like we've been ignored uh, during, rightly or wrongly, uh, while Congressman Randy Nagabauer has been in office, that we've been ignored, that he hasn't uh, stepped up to the plate when it comes to uh, ag and ag issues in Washington, D.C. Can you speak to that and, and say how you would you'd be any different? You know, I have never heard a farmer tell me that they want a handout. They need a hand up. we got to keep this farmer in business. You know, farmers are going away, somewhat like banks. They're either having to consolidate or they're having to grow, which means more capital-intensive uh, cost of cost of operation, cost of the commodities is going down, and I believe that the farmer needs its natural rights, you know, to the land that they have. They need to be able to transfer that land from one generation to the other, and it is a national security concern. When you look at, uh, pro- you know, if Russia is the one that's going to give us the uh, provide our 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 food, we're 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 at the mercy of someone else, and that's something we don't know, we don't need as a as a country to go through. We're visiting with Greg Garrett, uh, running for Congress in Texas 19. We'll go ahead. Let's take the break. When we come back, we'll continue on this issue. Get into many other issues as well with Greg Garrett. If you have a question, feel free to send in uh, your questions via email, chat at kfyo.com, or text them in 806-680-2790. Chat AC Show continues with Greg Garrett after this. Back on the Chat HD Show, News Talk 790 KFYO. Joining me in studio again, Greg Garrett, running for Congress in Texas 19. And, uh, Greg, we were talking about uh, farmers, ag producers uh, out there. And I want to stay on this just a, a few more minutes here. Uh, talk about the farm bill and uh, what you would do differently uh, with the farm bill or your approach to, uh, to, to ag-related issues uh, overall in Washington, D.C. You know, number number one, I will protect the farmer. Number two, I will hire the smartest people uh, that are in the agricultural community today in West Texas in the big country to put a committee together to let to, to advise me on exactly which issues we should take on and which issues we couldn't. You know, the one thing in business that you've got to be good as a leader is you got to surround your people with surround yourself with smart people. And that would be my plan. We've got to look at water issues. We got to look at energy prices. We got to look at peanuts, but we certainly got to pay attention to the cotton. And we got to we got to see how this insurance program that got wiped out, how we replace it and what we do about it. And I will commit myself to do that. Let me ask you a little bit about immigration, uh, which has been a big topic uh, everywhere, whether it be the presidential election, uh, whether it be this uh, election here for Texas 19. What would you do about, you have Donald Trump who's out talking about building a wall on the border. Are you for or against a, a border wall? It, you know, Chad, it's the federal government's job to secure the border and manage immigration issues. Some major issues that we have to deal with. Yesterday, we got some great news, by the way. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals issued a ruling on Monday evening, effectively putting a halt a halt to President Barack Obama's executive program. Texas and 26 other states joined this lawsuit to block the administration's illegal action. You know, the president's job, Chad, is not to enforce immigration laws, but but to enforce them. We've got to make sure that we secure the border. People like uh, Chad Governor Perry and Abbott and now Dan Patrick have continued to secure our borders with boots on the grounds, helicopters in the air, strategic fencing and walls. We've got to secure this border. We can't round up 12 million illegal immigrants, but we can round up every single illegal immigrant that's committed a crime. They must be deported immediately and never allowed back. I don't like anything to do with illegal. Illegal immigration 
illegal tax fraud, illegal drugs. It's illegal. Well, would you build a wall on the border? Would Absolutely. you vote to build a wall? Absolutely, I'll vote to build a wall. I'll do what it takes to protect the American citizens. This is one of the main issues that we're dealing with in our economy, and it's a federal issue. And we must take strong and bold action to make sure we protect our citizens. Immigration is probably going to be an issue for a while in Congress. Uh, there are different plans out there. You have one offered up by Donald Trump right now. If you've, uh, you know, everybody goes. You're, you're here illegally. You got to leave. Everybody, everybody has to go. Uh, you brought up that you can't round up uh, millions, and millions of people and throw them out of the country. Uh, does that mean that you're for maybe more of a pathway towards citizenship for those who haven't broken any other laws other than breaking the law to get into this country? You know, I, I'm actually about a fingerprint. I, I feel like we need to have a fingerprint society for immigration. We need to make sure that we know who's coming and going. And and what we need to do is is we need to make sure we protect the border uh, with with everything we have, regardless of what that is. Uh, more troops on the ground if we need to. We need to maybe even bring back some of the folks that we have in foreign countries in defense to protect our border. There are lots of issues out there that, and lots of thought processes about how to do it, and I'll be one that will be committed to protect the U.S. citizen. Okay, well, after you fingerprint everybody, well, what do you, what happens after that? There needs to be a time frame in which they either have to get a green card or they go home. And once they go home, they never come back. So that is the plan. How do you get everyone to be fingerprinted? Uh, the way you get people to be fingerprinted is you give them a time frame, and once that time frame crosses, you deport them. And once they see people getting deported, they will make the decision, I'll either get a green card or I'll go home. And these people that get a green card do not deserve the Social Security that we've paid in for. They do not deserve the Medicare and Medicaid benefits that we have paid for. They need to be people that that are here happily to make a better life for themselves and their family. There are opportunities in the United States of America. But, again, we have to be protected, and they have to do the right thing. If someone's here illegally, they, they, they go with the, the Garrett plan here. Uh, they go and get fingerprinted. They decide they, they want to get a green card. They, they want to work in the United States. Should there be a way where they can eventually become a full U.S. citizen? Not today. Once they be, once they once they get a green card, they need to they need to serve this country. Now there again it is a committee that I would have set up with really smart people to tell me exactly if someone is able to be a U.S. citizen in the future. But in today's society, we cannot add cost. We need we need more tax revenue without adding to the cost of Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. And for that one reason alone, we cannot give them the ability to be a U.S. citizen today. Well, we've talked about immigration. What do you think, for you personally uh, and your campaign, once you get to Washington, D.C., uh, besides immigration, which you've talked about, uh, what are some of the you know one or two other key issues that you want to focus on? You know, I certainly want to focus on, I've, I've got a plan of approximately 10 things. First thing we've got to have is we've got to have a balanced budget. You know, when I talk about a balanced budget, you know, I have to balance my budget at, at the bank. I have to have a balanced budget at home. You know, it's about time that the federal government had a balanced budget. And one of the things I want to do is I want to step in and think about how do we really balance our budget. One, one thing I'll tell you, Chad, is, is there's the problem in Washington is that there's two things they have that most of the hundreds of the small businesses that I finance don't have. They have money and time. And what we need to do is we need to put some segregation of duties within the agencies. The agencies need to be audited. As a, as a financial institution, I don't have to have an audit. I get one because I want my stockholders of the bank every single year to know that I have not done anything I'm not supposed to do and that, our, that we're sound, financially prudent. One of the things I want is I want a centralized funding department. I want to take accounting divisions out of agencies, move them into the Treasury, and I want a segregation of, of duties so that, so that people that fund these federal governments, we can watch exactly where the money goes. Otherwise, we have no idea. And until we know where the money goes, we're going to be lost as far as knowing how to balance the budget and provide the right economic environment for us to work in. I'm visiting with Greg Garrett running for Congress in Texas 19. Uh, this goes back, maybe back to the unity question that uh, we, we talked about earlier in the interview. Uh, you have seen a, a fight between conservative Republicans and the so-called establishment Republicans uh, as far as tactics go when dealing with issues such as Planned Parenthood 
uh, in funding Planned Parenthood. Uh, so there were some Republicans who said, we'll shut down the government over this. If there's any money in the budget, we're not going to approve of this. We're willing to shut down the government. If you were in Congress, how would you vote? Would you vote to shut down the government? You know, I hate to I hate to say this to you because I want to be your friend. It's a little bit of a flawed question. Let me explain exactly how I'd handle it. It is not our responsibility as someone who's in the House or the Senate to close down the government. You know, we have we have a president that should be able to close down the government. We need to set appropriations. We need to show them exactly what we're going to fund, and we can let that guy shut down the government, not us. Well, let me rephrase it then. Okay. It's going to be perceived as, and I agree with you, it is the president's uh, who's going to be shutting down the government. But the media is going to spin it. Congress is shutting down the government. Would you be willing to risk that? Yes. Short answer, yes, period. I will do it. You know, if we can't protect life, we can't protect anything else. And so we have to be morally sound. We have to make sure that we we defund Planned Parenthood. We need to be about one man and a woman. We need to be biblically on base with what we have to do to change this country. Uh, let me bring up another uh, instance where there was the threat of a shutdown. There's going to be a threat of a shutdown, I'm sure, uh, going forward. But over Obamacare and funding of Obamacare, would you vote uh, in a way that would maybe lead towards a government shutdown uh, to, to get rid of Obamacare money? We should repeal Obamacare, and we need to look at how well the government's done at running any type of administration. They failed. We've got to put practical, common-sense, business practicals uh, principles into the government. And so, yes, I would shut down the government over over the Obamacare. It's time it's re- repealed, and I will commit to to repeal all of Obama's executive orders. Do you think Congress and the White House overall have done enough when it comes to fighting ISIS uh, overseas? No. I believe that ISIS is a huge threat. I'm not so sure that ISIS is not in West Texas. And I think the only way that we deal with ISIS is we kill them. And when I said I'm tough but fair, you know, why are you going to negotiate with someone that's not negotiable, someone that wants to wipe you out? Let's just talk quickly about Israel. What happened if everybody that surrounds Israel would like to annihilate them correctly? So we live in the United States. What if Canada and Mexico wanted to wipe us out and we had somebody on the east and the west coast that hate us too? How would we feel? We would live in fear. You know, one of the things that we've got to do is we've got to kill the – anyone to do with ISIS, wipe them out, and show them that we're totally in charge. Visiting uh, with Greg Garrett in studio. Greg, as we uh, start to wrap it up, I think we have about a minute or so left, uh, maybe about 40 seconds left. Tell folks what they need to know about Greg Garrett. Greg Garrett knows how to build a successful business. He knows he knows how to deal with federal regulators in a very positive way. I'm a very genuine person, nice to a fault, but tough but fair. I do... I do believe in God. I'm a deacon at Trinity Church. I am a career banker and a capitalist. I'm involved in the Rotary here locally as well as the ABC Club. I'm on the foundation boards of of LCU and Trinity, and I appreciate being on your show, Chad. Greg Garrett, nice to have you in studio. 